Um, so hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Emily Gupton. I'm chief of staff for a company called SKG here in Austin. Um, we solve interior commercial space solutions with furniture and architectural and technology products. Um, and we have recently started to uh, build our own technology solutions. So I uh, went from doing a lot of processes and operations to being a product manager, uh, whether I wanted that to be my situation or not. And I've learned a lot um, and getting ready to break off with my CEO and start a new uh, tech startup. So really excited and excited to be here. I've definitely learned a lot. Um, and a little bit about before I came here to Austin, um, I worked in different industries. Um, healthcare was my first industry and then moved to kind of construction, interior, commercial solutions. And that was definitely a pivot. Um, but in, in most of my paths, um, I've started in one position and ended up slingshotted across uh, in something completely different uh, uh, where I've been. And so I'm happy to share uh, some of that journey for myself and how I got there and share my experiences and hopefully give you guys some good insights on, on how to do that yourselves. My name is Jerrica Witte. I'm another co-facilitator for this evening for this session. Um, currently, I'm a product manager at Social Solutions. We are a software company that builds uh, case management solutions for the nonprofit and public sector um, organizations. So the reason I work at this organization is because I spent about five and a half years um, working in nonprofits. And before that, I worked at Apple in a couple of different logistics positions um, and found myself just like not excited to go to work every day to reset someone's password and decided to think about the last time I felt really challenged and motivated in the workplace and it was in nonprofits. And after about five years doing nonprofit work, um, I wanted to have a larger impact. I wanted to help people, not just who were participants of the organization that I was working in, but find a way to broaden my skill set and also broaden my reach and impact um, working with nonprofits. And I thought back to a great session that I heard about technology in nonprofits and how that sector has been kind of left behind by technology. And it was by someone that worked at Social Solutions. So I made that connection, started working there in October of 2019 as a solutions specialist. So helping with pre-sales, doing demonstrations. And in January of this year, I transitioned to our product team. Um, so currently product manager, I talk a lot with um, our clients and prospects and do a lot of research into the sector to make sure that we are solving the right problems in the right order um, for our clients and making sure that everything's up and running and everyone on our software is happy um, and that they also have an avenue to express any feedback so that we can continue to improve um, our product. I never thought I would be a product manager, but I absolutely love it. I'm so happy to share my experiences bouncing from tech, nonprofit, back to tech, and, and all of those stops along the way, how I've either created new roles for myself to grow into that didn't exist, um, or was able to um, show that I wanted that next opportunity. Um, and then I'm the final co-host for tonight. Um, my name is Olivia Millard, and I work in sales. I've always worked in sales, but currently I'm at Procore Technologies, which is a construction management tech firm based out of Santa Barbara, but they've got a huge hub in Austin, Texas. Um, I mentioned I've always been in sales. I had a little blip where I was in account management, but I knew that I wanted to get over into the sales org. Um, really sold into, this was at a company called Education Advisory Board. Um, so kind of higher ed and also healthcare experience over there. Um, but said yes to a new market, small schools, you know, definitely was not like your direct step up, but got some good experience there, proved myself, and then said yes again to selling into, again, a small, small schools market, um, but our technology. So got some experience selling technology. So was by no means like the biggest grab towards like, what's the sexiest thing to go sell, um, but found sort of my niche in going to help launch new product, but being able to get experience while doing that. Um, I feel like that's something that's been a theme throughout my career is just <laughs> saying yes, and then um, be, being willing to just uh, try something new. Um, I made a career move. So that I was at that company for seven years, which I feel is unique, <laughs> maybe this day and age to be at one company for so long. 
but I was traveling all the time and I couldn't sustain that lifestyle. I wanted a family. Um, so I actually ended up really thinking hard about what I wanted next in my, you know, career and, and came to Procore. Um, so going from selling to higher ed to selling to construction is a little bit different, um, but made my, I guess, desires known at the company that if y'all start a public sector team, like, please, please, please hire me. And so within a year of me joining Procore, they started a public sector team and I was their first hire. And we've now hired 12 more onto that team. It's booming. And I think you know, all my friends around the time that I said yes to that public sector job, I was six months pregnant, like they were all getting promoted. It was definitely not like the most natural climb upwards. But um, now I'm seeing myself as a very natural leader for our team. So I could step into a, hopefully a management job within the next year and, and just um, have established myself as a leader within the org just by making the decision I did to say yes to something that nobody had done before. So I'm happy to talk about kind of how to cr help create your brand internally, you know, saying yes to scary things. So, yeah. All right, so who's got, Who's got some questions or tough <laughs> situations or what do y'all have for us? Yeah, on the sales side, I mean, Austin's like <laughs> the place to be right now. Um, this is like the market where you get to negotiate for everything you want. Um, I think for me, like in sales jobs, because everything can seem quite similar, it has been about identifying like those specific things that I want out of my next job. So like out of the job when I moved from EAB over to Procore, like I just, I wanted stability. Um, and then I wanted to know that the company was growing, that it was going somewhere and that I could have like a natural, comfortable place to grow myself within it. And, and I saw that all around me at the company when I was interviewing, I was almost like really interviewing the people that were interviewing me. <laughs> so you're sort of at that point in your career where like you get to do that. And it's definitely, I guess, in like a buyer's market, seller's market, you know, <laughs> it's definitely like a seller's market. So you, you uh, have a good opportunity here for sure. Yeah, thanks. See, so that's I always true, right? I mean, you should always be interviewing the company that I, I, as you get along in your career, you learn a whole lot more about, <laughs> about that. You know, you, you start to, to realize that the culture is every bit as important mm -hmm. as what the job is. Yeah, yeah and I'm really fortunate. I work for a, a Christian-based organization, which in technology is very, very unusual. Um, but I had two of them. Last one was for seven years. And so I really find the ethics and the values grounded mm -hmm. with my own. And so... I'm having a little more of a challenge figuring out who those organizations might be here in Texas because I am newer and kind of there's no real list that I have found. You might consider some of the hospital networks, um, Ascension. I don't know if this is a perfect alignment, but I know my organization, we sell into nonprofit organizations and public sector and we are... Um, I don't want to get this wrong because I have a colleague on the call, uh, but we are a B Corp and we take our values very seriously and are very mission driven. So I think a lot of times there is opportunity in looking at what is being sold and who they're selling into, who are those primary customers and prospects um, that can help a lot. That was something that I took very seriously when I considered coming from nonprofit and back into tech is I wanted to make sure that I felt good about why I was waking up every day coming to work. So that's something to look at. Um, I work at Social Solutions, but I know there's a lot of organizations around town that work with um, the nonprofit sector because this is such a rich nonprofit environment. Um, being in Austin, we have literally thousands of organizations. So there's a lot of um, vendor and support organizations for that sector here. Thank you. I don't want to take up all the time. I did stick my LinkedIn and I saw you guys responded. So I have to jump off and hop on my other session, but it was so nice to meet you all. And I, I hope we can connect and uh, talk more. Thank you. Thank you so much. I actually had a question for you guys. Um, I'm Leslie Dill. I'm actually on the Austin Women in Tech board. I'm the social media chair. So um, I'm the person who put all of your um, lovely headshots online. <laughs> Um, but I had a quick question. So I've been working for five years and my background is in marketing and more recently also added business development. 
um, sort of to my career. And uh, at least uh, having mostly worked in Austin, I've noticed that um, a lot of the positions that I've stepped into or the projects that I've been handed have, uh, you know, they're new positions, right? Or they're newly created. No one's sat in those positions before. You know, they're kind of created out of uh, a necessity or um, you know, there's, there's too much on, you know, the director of marketing's plate. So they need another person, you know, kind of lower on the chain um, to take care of things. I was just kind of wondering if you guys had any advice on how to kind of set goals or strategize your own career if you keep kind of stepping into these positions where, you know, it's kind of like an open road in front of you and your job description is kind of what they think you're going to be doing versus what it really develops into, which is much more. Um, so I wondered if you guys had any kind of advice or, or learnings from, the, from something like that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Leslie, this, this kind of aligns with how my path has been my whole life. Um, I have created a lot of my own kind of path and roles and handed weird things. And, um, you know, I, thinking about my path, you know, I was in healthcare and then I made this hard pivot to construction, GC land, knew nothing about purchase orders, or I didn't even know what that was, right? When I made that transition, because healthcare was an outpatient radiology, which is super niche. So, um, you know, when I stepped into that and made that transition, um, I got handed a pile of stuff as a project management assistant and nailed that and then got handed another pile of stuff. And they're like, we don't really know what to do with this. That we need some data processing and learned SQL, Power Pivot, Power Query, like all of those things that then set me up to move into like business processes and operations and then product management, which is where I'm at now and now about to go do a startup. And so I think with each of those moves, I did a lot of like learning and researching and learned how to like take those skills and, and market myself to other positions to help me grow within my company. And, and that's worked well for me. Um, something that I'm super passionate about and with all of my direct reports is continuous learning, whether it's a certificate, a class, a Reddit thread to learn something new and how to accomplish it. Curiosity um, is, is big for me. And it sounds like you are handed those things. And I think that if you take that into your bucket and say, I can do all these great things and more, and here's where I want to go on my path and here's how I'm going to get there. Um, I think that you would be very successful in doing that. I love this question. I love a job that's like a little bit vague, but no one's going to take advantage of like your workload um, or something that is completely new because um, people that wrote that job description, they understand that they're not encompassing everything that that role is going to potentially do. So it really is your chance to make a mark on what that role does, not just for you, but for those that follow for you as well. Um, and also an opportunity to be in either a new role or a smaller organization. You got to kind of pick what your next step is. There's not a defined ladder and pathway. Um, in my first nonprofit job, um, it was just like, foundation coordinator, everything that someone else is not already assigned to do. And one thing that I would say a piece of advice for everyone is it's most important to like really own and nail your job, your current job that you are in, be a rock star at that and start having conversations with your um, bosses about what's next. Um, another thing that we talked about as a facilitation group is um, letting your ambitions know, like letting people know that like you want to advance, you want to grow in this role. So they're not surprised in six months, in a year when you're like, hey, I've been doing this job really well. I actually wrote up a job description that's more encompassing of what my major priorities are and a little bit more focused. And that is something that I've never had turned down from a boss from tech to nonprofit. Um, people like to see that you're taking that initiative and that you are wanting to stay with a company. No one wants to lose a great asset. It's very expensive to hire and train on new people. So I've always used that as an opportunity to decide what I wanna do next. So I think that is great. Own the role like as it is today and start having those conversations once you've mastered it to help reshape that role. And um, the role I was in previously all we did were demos all day. And I was like, I'm bored. I want to do more. That team has now grown from two people when I was on it to four. 
going to be 12 soon and they have a whole host of different responsibilities because those are things that I was interested in and I knew that we had the capacity to do. So I think that's a really great opportunity to shape what that role looks like for the next person behind you as well. And I'm gonna piggyback on what Jerrica said. Um, I totally agree with getting in and once you have the role and especially if you're bored, but just kind of expanding your knowledge of the different parts of the company and, you know, on what Olivia said, she's right on the front lines and understanding the growth of the company. So making yourself uh, or allowing yourself the opportunity to step up maybe into the eyes or ears of the C-suite roles and what are they watching for? And what are they looking for? And where are they going? And, and what ideas can you bring to the table? And just, uh, and I'm speaking out too about, um, this is kind of how we do it in Sperry. I'm a business performance advisor there and we've grown for 35 years there are people in the company that have had more than one position, but have been there for decades. So we too understand that an employee is an asset to the business and it's the driving value of the bottom line. And when that's in place and everything works, finding the best niche for that person, maybe they don't enter into the position, obviously, as we all know, but they're able to then capture what's going on and really elevate themselves in that process. So I agree on all counts. I also think it's important to take into account like your personal wants as well, like the natural state of, I don't know, America is like, just keep climbing upwards, like just keep taking on more. And like, I think it's perfectly okay to like, just stay in a current job because it's really suiting your lifestyle. And then within that job, so like for me that I had a baby within the last year and a half, like I didn't want to do lots of crazy different things, but I wanted to keep interested in the company. And so I took on, um, you know, a, a passion project of improving our parental leave uh, at Procor. And so that's been like an ongoing passion project, something I really care about. And it's been okay to stay in that. And then as you're like deciding, okay, what do I want to do next? What's my next goals? Like also take your personal stuff into account. Like, what do you want to do next? And then state that what I want to do next to everybody around you. <laughs> you know, it doesn't even have to be your direct manager. It can be like, you know, your, your colleague, because they might get asked about you. And then they know like, oh, Olivia really wants to manage next, you know? And I think she's really good for that. Like the more that people are also talking about you internally about what you want, in my opinion, it's better. So, yeah. I think higher skills can also support your other like team members and other people at your organization, like letting people also be known what you're capable of is, is helpful too. Cause you never know kind of like what Olivia is saying, like who's going to say, oh, well, you know, you've got this niche skill set, like, where, where do you want to go? Yeah, and always helping your manager do his or her job better always helps yeah. in so many ways. Who else has yes. questions? Yeah. Me. My question is, when do you start looking? <laughs> I, I... Debbie, I think I saw you say now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you don't want to be, to, to me, I'm passionate about this. My husband and I together are passionate about this for us in our life. You, to me, I don't, you don't want to be miserable every day of your life for, for a job. You don't owe, you don't owe them anything and you don't owe them your happiness. And I'm sad that, yeah. that you are feeling that way every day, you know, reach out. Like I put stuff in the AWT Slack all the time, um, about, you know, where I need help and, and who knows about these different things. And, and you never know what somebody might have available as an opportunity for you. So, right. so reach out and see what's there. And, and you just, you just never know. Um, and I wish, yeah, you, I wish I, you luck. If you're already at that place, it looked start tonight. Um, I had a job once where I would cry in a parking garage and some days I would go back. <laughs> and I live very far south and this job was very far north. And I was like, I don't care about calling in sick. I cannot do this anymore. Find another <laughs> job. There's more out there than you know. And what I did to feel the time while like I still had to work this job for financial reasons was I started volunteering. I joined boards. I started yeah. doing more so that I was getting some sort of professional fulfillment in the time between. I yeah. also think that your timeline thing, like you can do anything for a year is a total false timeline. Like it's just a parameter that people have put up. And like, I think that if you want to find the next most successful thing, you could very well be there for 10 years, you know? So 
the whole, I can do anything for a year. It's not helpful to anyone, you know, I'll tell my sister. Yeah, and if there's nothing that you can do to change the role or anything that's like flexible and you've like exhausted all of those opportunities and options. That- um, I am I am a, a contract. I'm working for a contract agency for a very, very large okay. oil company. And so it's very, very defined. Now, you know, things have gotten a little better. My job has started to be a little busier and I am, you know, able to have more to do during the day. So that has helped a lot. So um- I have recently switched um, careers, um, still in sales. I've always had some element of sales. Um, And I was curious to know any kind of um, tips on how to come up the learning curve on everything from acronyms (laughs) to um, just uh, the the new way of the new career path that you choose you've chosen is there any um tips that worked for you guys that you can share like Emily, um, a lot yeah i can <laughs> i can start the dialogue um you know for me it was it was not being afraid to ask all of the questions and um really align myself with people who you know, I felt we're passionate about the organization and what they did and and kind of buddying up with them to reach out for help when I needed it. Um, Going from healthcare to construction was very jarring. Um, I had to learn a lot very quickly. And um, so, you know, everybody from the installers to the, the project managers to the sellers, I mean, I was asking everybody all the things. And um, I used to be extremely introverted when I was when I was young, and uh, really had to get over that very quickly. Uh, come out of my shell, and you know, not feel uncomfortable asking those questions. And I feel like it's kind of in school where it's like nobody wants to raise their hand to answer a question to show they know the knowledge or to ask because they're going to feel dumb. Don't feel dumb. That's what your your colleagues are there to help you. Um, we actually hilariously made a acronym cheat sheet for all of our new hires because our processes and our industry is so complicated. So uh, it's on our like internet. I would say maybe champion for that if there is a steep learning curve there. And um, I, I would err to say that your colleagues will help you out however they can. Yeah, I also think um, it's okay not to know everything. Like I think that it takes six months to learn a job I do. And I think it takes a year to feel like you're like landed and then two years really to feel like you're really good at it. And so I would trade, especially in sales, a genuine, you know, interest in like leaning on the experience you have versus trying to pretend like, you know, something or know a lingo or know the the industry better than you do, because it's always going to show. And so like, I, you quickly make relationships. That's what you're good at. You're in sales. So naturally just ask the people that you're with and you say, Hey, I'm new to the industry. I'm really good at tech. Like I'm really good at helping you understand how to move something through your organization to get it sold. But like, I would love for you to help me understand what your day-to-day looks like. And like ask that question on every single job. And that'll be, I think that'll be the fast or every single, um, you know, sorry, meeting. And that'll be your fastest way to learning the industry. I think. Thank you. I had a couple of tips when I started my latest position as a business performance advisor, um, a lot of information. And every day when I get on the phone with business owners and um, CEOs that I never know where the conversation is going to take me. So learning how to ask really great questions and not take anything personal, but along the way with the nuances of how to do all of that, I went back to my elementary school days back in the day, y'all are some of you are a lot younger than I am, but we had flashcards and they were very important then. And they were very, so I made my own flashcards so that I could quiz myself and just get back in the habit of learning very quickly and well. Love that. Flashcards are are timeless. They're yeah. forever. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> flashcards are great. And I do like making them yourselves because there's, I guess I'm also of a certain age where we wrote everything out longhand. And so if I write it out with a pencil, not a pen, if I write it out with a pencil, it sticks in my head better than any other method in the world. (laughs) So to the point about the acronyms, I also, I work in biotech now, but my previous industry was background screening. So I had to learn all kinds of new things really quickly. I started a cheat sheet of acronyms and I just went around to people and had them, like I was making my best guess 
And then I had to tell me, am I right? Like, and then sometimes my guesses were completely wrong, (laughs) but at least they knew I was putting in the effort and they were willing to help me out with that. So that would be one of my tips for that too. I was going to throw in another tip. Um, I know in my organization, we have a lot of like subject matter experts who happen to not be in sales. Maybe they're in support, maybe they're in product. I love when people ask me questions. I have salespeople all the time. We're like, can I ask you a question? Yes, please. I want us to be, you know, speaking the same language to our prospects and our clients. So reach out beyond just your immediate organization and your department and see who else would be a good person um, to help you with that. Because that is like my second favorite part of my job is helping other people learn. And the more people that know, I think it goes to your brand internally. So this goes to like career strategizing and like it being okay that you're maybe at the same job for a little while. Like the more people you get to know within that job, they know you, they know your brand, they know you're interested in learning more and you're open-minded, like that benefits. You'd be surprised, like VPs notice that like when people are going to speak well of you in an organization. Um, Yeah. The more questions you ask, the better. Hey, Sage, you had a question. I just wanted to, to get to it. So you're graduating. Congratulations. Um, and uh, some tips for marketing yourself and looking for a new job. Um, Emily, Jerrica, y'all want to? Y'all done more than that than me. I've like made one job switch. <laughs> or LinkedIn. One, one company switch. So, yeah. <laughs> LinkedIn. Networking. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. Oh this is good. <laughs> um, networking is huge. Um, also, in May, you're, you said you're graduating this spring. We have a uh, mentoring workshop every May here at AWT. We've had it for at least seven years running, and it's always in May. So join that because we always have a breakout session specifically for job hunting, and we try to always have one for either people career changing or people just graduating from college because those are always huge topics. So be on the lookout for that come May. Um, And some of the tips that we got from the other thing is, one, proactively find those recruiters. Start looking now. Go to your, your, your university job fairs. Make those connections. Universities love new graduates. They're going to be on your campus, especially as tight as the job market is in 2021 and going into 2022. Take advantage of all of those people you can meet and follow up with them. Just essentially in this last semester of school, if job seeking is one of your main goals of the semester, come up with your own syllabus for how you're going to do that. What recruiters are you going to talk to? You know, how many of those things are you going to, and then then just make each assignment for yourself every week of how many you're going to follow up with. And trust me, it will work. And And the different industries and the type of company that you want to work for and the culture that you, that you want and you desire, because that can be a a sucker of life. So I would highly recommend that is number one thing. Money is important, but it's not the only thing. Erica, what were you going to say? I was going to say, if you have a degree that isn't like directly leading into a specific industry or role, and you want to kind of figure out what job to apply for, one thing that's really helpful that I do is I make a like wish list of things that I want from a job and I have items that are non-negotiables like I have to have these things and things that are like nice to haves but like for the right culture fit I will you know sacrifice that for maybe it's a later um thing like I like I like traveling for work but I don't want to travel more than 30 percent of the time um I want to have um certain freedoms I want to make sure that professional development is not just offered for the time, but they also pay and support that. So really like picking out the things that will make you um, professionally happy will help identify what is a good culture fit for an organization because it can definitely be intimidating when you keep hearing culture fit, but you don't yet have identified what your values and needs are. So like really self-exploration before you just say yes to a job. Yeah. And you can talk to, I've had employees or like now employees at Procore, like they've reached out to me when they were in the interview process, just they want like on LinkedIn and they wanted to hear from like an independent, non-interested party. Like, what is it like to work at the company and how do they treat mothers and, you know, just that type of thing. So like you can, I feel very open. Maybe some people won't respond back to you well on that, but I bet some people will. And maybe the type of company you want to work at, like those people probably will. So that's one thing. Um, And also 
I think take some pressure off of yourself. So like you're graduating and your first job out of college does not have to be a perfect fit. So isolate those like two to three must haves out of that job. What do you want it to teach you? Because I feel like for the first part of your career, you're kind of in it for the learning. Like Emily, you know, like you're in it to gain experience, to gain a story, to gain a brand. And then as you get further along your career, you get to be, I think, just more discerning because you know more about what you want. So just take a little pressure off this first job. Like it does not have to be absolutely perfect in everything you ever dreamed of. Um, and that's the story that they tell you when you're in college, like your first job, you know, and it just isn't that. So it's okay to, to look at it at face value. And I think branding yourself too, like, which, which is something specific that, that you asked about, you know, hone in on what your experience have, experiences have been in school. Like, what have you done? What have you done in the community? How can you apply those skills to whatever you're applying for, um, you know, to show that relevancy and, and what you're passionate about? And are you, you know, passionate and aligned with the company's values um, to really show your interest in, in whatever that is? And, and Olivia is right. Like, I started out in outpatient radiology, supporting radiologists reading mammogram films. And that is like the furthest thing from what I'm doing right now. And I learned very quickly that I did not want to be a doctor uh, or a nurse and uh, pivoted very hard. For, and my, my undergraduate degree is neuroscience and I do nothing like that right now. So you will learn a lot and it will change and it will be fun and exciting. And uh, I love, I, I, we have interns here at work too. And I just love learning about their paths. It's so much fun. But anyway, good luck. Good luck. And we're all here to support you. <clears throat> Something that's important, like Jericho, to your point, like what type of org do you want to be a part of? Like what, how is learning and like development embedded within the culture? Um, the company that I was at, EAB, like they had a wonderful culture for taking the people that are like their bottom level people and they were all like future leaders of the company. So you could point to like a VP and they were like, I was at SDR once, you know, and like that shows you that somebody can start small and then, you know, grow up. So I think that's maybe part of the vetting process. And it has been for me at any company that I've been at. Yeah, Emily, I was going to call you out, put you on the spot if you're okay with that. Like yeah. you, as you have moved through your career, you found a way to like attach legitimacy to each like move with courses, with gaining, you know, certifications and things. So yeah, I would love to, how did you do that? I, I want to know, <laughs> like, how do you, how did you find those classes to take? And yeah. Uh, um. So so my certifications and all of that, I have a neuroscience undergrad, a business undergrad, an MBA, and then I just completed a certificate program at MIT um, for the technology stuff that I'm doing now. And, um, you know, going, uh, my undergrad was like, I don't know what I want to do. I wanted to do neuroscience and I didn't know how, where that was going to go. And my mom was like, slap business on there because you never know what's going to happen. And uh, that was actually a really good choice. Um, but you know, as I was going through my career, um, I spent a lot of time thinking about when doing project management, um, do I want to do an MBA? Do I want to do an MHA, like master's in healthcare administration? Like, what do I do next? And, um, you know, I, for me, I landed on an MBA because that seemed broad and general enough. And I could kind of do some focus classes to position myself in different ways. Uh, took project management as one of my electives. And I was in project management at the time. Uh, learned a lot of skills. And then, you know, recently I knew I was going to be doing, managing this technology project. So I did a lot of research and found this digital transformation certificate program at MIT doing it at the same time while product managing was probably not the best decision because it was exceedingly challenging. But, um, you know, for me, it's doing a lot of research and figuring out what aligns with what I'm doing now or what I want to be doing is my next move. Um, Reddit was also really helpful too, kind of like poking people on Reddit and seeing what other people are up to and what's available out there. Um, that's, that's where I spend some of my free time on the weekends. Um, you know, that's sometimes hard to give that up while you're working full time. It, it's challenging. And um, my husband, you know, we kind of work it out before I venture into one of those to say, are we willing to sacrifice this uh, together time for me to do this? And, and it goes by so quick and it's, it's really paid off. Like this most recent thing I did 50 times over uh, with the skills that I gained in managing our technology transition and now I'm going to run a tech startup. Like 
who would have thought? Definitely not me five years ago, for sure. So I don't know if that's helpful at all, but that's. It is. It's totally like thinking outside the box. Um, I feel like you go heads down in your job and in your, I don't know, current company. And I'm, I'm actually interested in some of the HR stuff because I've gotten really interested in um, parental leave policies at companies and like how to make those better. And that's a lot of HR, it's a lot of legal. <laughs> so uh, that might be something I explore coming out of this, just given your experience, Emily. There's so much out there too. Like, you know, I, I was budgeted the heck out of my life to pay for my MBA. I know not everybody can, can do that because cost is a big factor for some of those, but there are so many things that are free also to, to help your learning, like Harvard and, and all of those Ivy League schools pull together this beautiful free course platform where you can take, like I signed up for the computer science basics class, but it is watching 18 weeks or whatever of lectures on computer science at no cost. Um, so I think there are a lot of really great free tools out there to explore um, as well to hone your skills and learn something new.